beautiful earthlings. It's day 49, December 9th. We are in Skopje, North Macedonia. Um, I learned uh, all the time I was pronouncing it Skopje. Maybe I was thinking like Korean Japje or something. Um, but I was joking with my hostel mates like, oh, like whenever I start a video from a city, like I pronounce it one way and then I, as I talk to more locals and other people, I realize it's another way. So like the transition of my language ability changes like throughout the course of a city. So just want to say we're in Skopje, North Macedonia. I realized I broke my tripod while in the adventure of moving yesterday and this thing like doesn't push out anymore so we're gonna frankenstein my tiny tiny tripod and hopefully the screws are the same because how will i take pictures without my little tripod um this i got from my badminton friend <laughs> and he, it was like a promotional item from at t so always upcycling yay it works i just shed like 0 0.05 of an ounce <laughs> cool i actually like this one better because it's like automatic okay So what are we doing today? Um, I think we're just gonna walk around. I want to get my SIM card figured out because I want to play badminton and um, the number on Google is not connected to WhatsApp of the badminton gym. So how do I need to get one in this case? And um, I want to walk around downtown and see if the old bazaar is open. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do a short day trip. I don't know. So let's get started. Okay, we're currently moving. That's my hostel. Do, 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 do. And this is my neighborhood. There's a bunch of graffiti, but this doesn't deter me. Look at these, look at this gate. Must be a preschool. My people. This is how construction zones are bordered. <laughs> Traveling outside the US has made me realize how so happy Americans are. It's like someone would intentionally cut themselves on that corrugated fence to get, you know, some money. But here it's like, Dude, they wouldn't fall for that shit. <laughs> Okay, we're at T-Mobile to figure out our SIM card. Okay, T-Mobile was not able to help me and I was on the phone with customer service multiple times with different people and it didn't work. Dude, it was pretty frustrating. So I walked over to the A1, <laughs> bought a card from them and um, they said it would be activated in 20 minutes so I'm going to try that. Route. Okay, I figured out my SIM card, and of course I get food. I was only going to stop in for oatmeal, but look at this.
fuck cooking rice for today. <laughs> It's like Alfred Hitchcock's uh, The Birds. <laughs> They're like talking. So I was getting rice and then the lady, you know, she didn't really speak English. She indicated the small container and I was like, no, <laughs> the big container. <laughs> and she started smiling. And then she only pulled it up like three fourths of the way but didn't like pack it tight. And I was like, hand motion can you put more and then she smiled and she put more and i was like more <laughs> i think i don't think people understand how much i hate um so oh look that's the millennium cross i think do you see it on the hill so the whole reason i wanted to or i spent so much effort trying to get a sim card is because i want to play batman and um the number on Google wasn't a WhatsApp number, so I needed like internet service to call. And then I called and then he deferred me to the Batman coach and gave me that number. And then I was talking to the coach and he's like, okay, how long are you staying in North Macedonia? And I was like, I don't know, probably three days. And he's like, what? You're staying three days and you found me? And I'm like, yeah, I played badminton in Croatia, in Serbia, and now I'm here. And he's like, okay, bravo, bravo. So I'm gonna go to their training today at 6.45, and then he's gonna set me up with some games. So it was all worth the SIM card issue. <laughs> such a nerd, ah, such a nerd. Okay, I don't have my hard cases and I'm getting ready for badminton. So I just want to show you how I carry my rackets. I put a microfiber towel in between the two. One is my real racket, one's my backup racket. I grab my pants and I shove them in one of the legs and then I just wrap the head and then wrap the neck and then And then I just put it in my backpack. This is not okay, but I don't have a choice. So next time, no, I wouldn't bring my rifle case because that's, that's just weird. I think it's only like 15 minutes away, so that's not bad. I got here super early, aka three minutes early, because I'm always late and I wanted to like stretch and stuff. But here's the gym. It's like a high school. They have one, two, three, four courts, basketball, planks, um, let's see, kind of similar roof to the one in Serbia where it's high in the middle and then slope down. So mm, your clears probably will hit it if you do a high one. And lines are pretty close to the back. So here is um, a truss actually. And if you like overswing like back here, you might be in trouble. So I'll watch out for that. Okay, I'm gonna get out of my wet gear. Maybe like put it somewhere, start stretching. I just finished playing badminton and um, this session was a bunch of high school kids. So I played oh, my favorite sarcasm singles um, with this kid. And of course I lost, but that's fine. I just want to do this for exercise. And then the coach, he's like, I gotta go. I, 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 I coach at another gym. He's like, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah. He's like, they're not very high level, but it's good for like training and technical. And I was like, yeah, I just want to play. So 
I'm heading to the next gym, which is like five minutes away. And this is great because all I do is play. And the coach was so nice. His name is Gorman. And he was like, you, you should come coach for my kids. It could be an open contract. And I was like, no, I need to see the world. And then um, he, when he was telling me about the second gym, he's like, do you like, like implying like, oh, I can drive you because it's like pouring right now. And I was like, no, I want to take my motorcycle. I don't really want to leave it here. So let's go. I'm crazy. <laughs> you you find every place. <laughs> I have to play badminton. And here's the second gym. These lines are really close together, so that's something to watch out for. And then when I was clearing, my clearers hit both the high roof and then the ridge. So the ceiling's kind of low. And then the line's pretty far, or pretty close to the wall, so it kind of like threw me off, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm all badmintoned out today. So, gonna go back to my hostel, shower, dinner. Okay, I just wanted to tell the story of um, the badminton coach. I talked to him a little bit um, after I was done playing, and you know, he teaches Tuesday, Thursdays to kids. Um, runs from one gym to the next, like literally back to back. As I was saying like bye to him at the first gym, he's like, um, I gotta go, like, like I have another gym to go to. And I was like, what? Like, and I find out that he's the first badminton coach in North Macedonia, first player. And he learned in like, Serbia and Albania and he's trying to bring it to North Macedonia and popular uh, popularize the sport but there's no funding um, this seems like a common uh, story so yeah it's a pretty common story that badminton doesn't get a lot of funding I had the same issue when I was in high school like all the money went to the big sports football American football basketball yeah, those are the big three. Um, and there was money left over for Batman, or it wasn't like prioritized for us to get money to get a bus to go from school to school. So we had to car carpool with each other or our parents had to drive. Um, so this coach was telling me that he's dealing with a lot of politics, like He obviously doesn't have the money to like build a ground up gym and so he has to go from school to school sometimes high school primary schools to stripe the badminton lines on the floor but these gyms aren't like badminton regulation sizes like height or length wise um i kind of showed you like when i went to the gym like the ceilings are way too short and the lines are so close to each other that sometimes they're sharing the boundary line, like the outside boundary line, just to get the courts in. And so, like, you could, you break rackets that way. Um, but that's, he's, he's kind of like working with what he has. Um, I mean, he didn't really like tell me everything, but I can understand because I've seen it on the other side as a student. Um, and then just all this time I was thinking like, man, I wish I had the money to just give to him to build a gym, to popularize Batman in North Macedonia. Because he was saying like, he doesn't have a problem like 
teaching students or running from one gym to another, like back to back, it's the politics of trying to get funds to um, get funds to popularize the sport as well as like dealing with people and systems that are in place that just don't want you there um, and this guy's like doing it single-handedly it's kind of sad like imagine like your favorite sport didn't exist in your country and you're the one pioneering it like like would do I have enough passion to do that like that's what I was asking myself and I just told him like you're a really good person for doing this um my best my best friend keeps whatsapping me my bad um so yeah I like as I was talking to him listening to his story I just kept asking myself like would I be able to do this like would I be able to pioneer badminton in my country if it didn't exist and I don't know if I could like I know once people start playing like once you get a taste of it it's just so much fun like you want to keep going like I've I don't know I've played volleyball I've ran I've done other like pickup games and other sports and I'm probably biased but I don't think anything's as fun as badminton and uh, I wish I could help him in some way. Maybe I can one day. Um, but it was kind of sad because he was like kind of down from the situation. He's only like 40 something. And he was like, I think I'm going to stop after five years because it's just, it's just too much. And he doesn't want to deal with it. And I was just thinking like, man, if he quits, like who's going to take after him? So I don't know. Maybe if I fall upon a big lump of money, I can donate it to him to start the North Macedonian Badman Foundation. Like, it would be nice if he was saying, I was saying like, oh, Serbia has the same issue. Like, they don't have a lot of funding. It's not very popular. And he's like, yeah, but the government helped them. They got funding to build that gym. And that's the gym with like the kind of curved tarp walls. It's not the best ceiling, but at least it's like a dedicated space. And man, if it, that's all that takes, I'm like, how much is a tarp? <laughs> um, so we'll see. Uh, it's about 2 a.m. and I'm going to go to sleep now. So good night.